Welcome to NCE News Wrap, sponsored by Ground Force Shoreco, where we bring you some of the month's biggest stories in a quick five minute roundup. In big news this month, the Department for Transport has confirmed that the £3 billion Goulburn link will be removed from the HS2 Phase 2B bill. The 21km link was part of the HS2 crew to Manchester plans that would have seen trains taken off the main route before Manchester and connected to the West Coast Main Line near Wigan to continue the journey to Glasgow. The GFT has attributed the U-turn to conclusions made by Sir Peter Hendy in his Union Connectivity Review, in which he said that the Goulburn link would not resolve capacity constraints and might not be the best way to get high-speed trains to Scotland. Work has, however, begun on HS2's first and longest viaduct, the Colne Valley Viaduct, with the powering up of a 700 tonne bridge building machine known as a launching girder named Dominique. HS2 engineers have now started to put in place the 1,000 unique precast elements that will make up the 3.4 kilometre viaduct. The segments are in a variety of shapes to allow for the viaduct's gentle curves and they're being manufactured in a temporary factory close to the viaduct's north abutment. Assembly of the viaduct is expected to complete in 2024. A line JV precast engineer Nicholas Gay explained to NCE how engineers are using a match casting technique for perfect symmetry in the creation of the viaduct. So each segment is unique. We have 1,000 unique segments. Um, they each are numbered and they have all their uh, uh, geometrical characteristics. We change from one to the other. Also the inserts that we put in the, in the concrete are, are different from one to another. And we're using a principle called uh, match cast. So we are pouring a segment against the previous one so that we ensure that we have a perfect match between the two adjacent segments so that when we are erecting them then we know that they are matching perfectly because they've been pulled face to face together. There have also been a number of energy related developments recently. With Russia's invasion of the Ukraine there's been much discussion of the need to ensure energy security and deal with energy price rises. MPs have called for a decommissioning delay of the UK's ageing nuclear power stations, but EDF has since said that the shutdown of its Hinkley Point B nuclear power station will not be delayed. The plan is still for Hinkley Point B to move into the defuelling phase by the 1st of August this year. EDF has also announced that the start date for the Unit 1 reactor at its Hinkley Point C nuclear power station will be pushed back a year to June 2027, with the project also facing a £3 billion cost increase. The cost now sits at £25 to £26 billion, an increase on the previous £23 billion pound figure. Meanwhile, the consortium behind plans for a new nuclear power station on the Wilva Neuad site on Anglesey have reportedly shared initial cost estimates with the government. The proposals could see a new power station built costing between 14 to 17 billion pounds, with construction taking around six years. And this brings us to small modular reactors or SMRs, which are seen as a potentially cheaper and faster option. Things are also moving forward here. Rolls-Royce SMR submitted designs for small reactors at two Welsh sites in March and the company is also considering the possibility of rolling out SMRs in West Cumbria. Rolls-Royce hopes to receive UK regulatory approval for its SMR by mid-2024 with a view to powering up by 2029. In last month's news wrap, we told you that the opening date for Crossrail's Elizabeth Line had finally been announced. Well, now it's happened. After some 13 years of construction, the line is open. Following the opening of the line, Crossrail Chief Executive Mark Wilde announced that he would be stepping down, having taken over the running of the project in late 2018. Wilde said it is now time to shift the leadership fully to TFL and paid tribute to the 75,000 people who had worked on the incredible once-in-a-generation engineering achievement. 
In other Crossrail news, TfL Commissioner Andy Byford has confirmed that the delayed Bond Street station will open in the autumn, concurrent with the initiation of services running the full length from Shenfield to Reading. Thank you for watching NCE News Wrap. Join us again next month for another roundup. This news wrap was brought to you by New Civil Engineer in partnership with Ground Force Shoreco. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel for more content, but for now, here's a bit more information on our sponsor. Ground Force Shoreco are the leading supplier of shoring equipment in the UK and Ireland, delivering first class engineering and designs, exceptional service, and the highest quality kit for over 40 years, from the smallest excavations to the largest. Ground Force Shoreco. Experts in excavation safety.